What happens to the Foxconn project in Wisconsin now that a skeptical Democrat has been elected governor? It's a question that will be answered in the months and years to come, but you can't help but wonder if Foxconn has set in motion something bigger, a rethinking of the way states and cities do economic development, the way they compete against each other, handing out generous subsidies to corporations in return for the promise of jobs. Foxconn, with its roughly $4 billion in government subsidies, seems to have ignited a national debate about government's role in picking winners and losers. And last week, we saw just how much public sentiment seems to have shifted. Amazon's announcement of its two new corporate headquarters, one in Northern Virginia, the other in New York, was met with a fair amount of criticism from liberals and conservatives alike. The Wall Street Journal editorial board said of the incentive packages, we rarely agree with socialist congresswoman elect Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, but she's right to call billions of dollars in taxpayer subsidies for Amazon extremely concerning. These handouts to one of the richest companies in the history of the world with an essentially zero cost of capital is crony capitalism at its worst. Meanwhile, here in Wisconsin, several Republican senators and conservative groups balked at the prospect of giving $70 million in incentives to Kimberly Clark, help the company says it needs to keep a Fox Valley plant open. So what's changed? Why was the Foxconn deal able to pass the Republican-controlled Senate, but the Kimberly Clark deal is in jeopardy? Republican Senator Chris Kapinga said on this program a few months ago that the two are different animals, that Foxconn is potentially transformational and will bring new jobs to the state, while Kimberly Clark has been closing plants around the country. He says providing lucrative incentives to KC just to stay here could lead other companies to ask for the same treatment. But lawmakers also saw what happened with Foxconn, which hasn't, at least so far, turned out to be the political winner Governor Walker thought it would be. The Marquette Law School poll has consistently shown voter skepticism about the deal, especially outside southeastern Wisconsin. Many taxpayers wonder why huge corporations should be paid a king's ransom to locate in often cash-strapped communities. The answer is that's the way the economic development game has been played, at least until now. Thanks for being with us today. I'm Mike Goucher, and I'll see you again next week on Upfront. You can see today's program on our website. Just click on the Upfront section of WISN.com.